I'm going crazy self-isolating and it's only been 10 days. But this guy, he was isolated for 520 days. Romain Charles, he can tell us how to stay sane and deal with cabin fever during the corona crisis. I mean, you're the perfect person to talk to basically about this topic. Thank you. Um, it, it's true that my story becomes a bit more relevant right now. So many of us, including me here in Berlin, are in self-isolation due to the corona pandemic or even in quarantine. How's everybody's self-isolation going? Right, I, I, I'm in quarantine for 14 de- what? what in I guess it doesn't seem that bad to most people yet, but being stuck inside for a long period of time can have serious consequences. People feel upset, hopeless, depressed. It's a situation almost all of us are new to. Except for this guy. He spent 520 days on lockdown with five other guys inside a mock spacecraft in Moscow. So I asked him and a professor of psychiatry who studied SARS patients in isolation how to deal with being isolated, specifically how to deal with cabin fever. The first thing is to, um, to realize why you want to do that. What is your motivation? And, and I think that applies still today with our confinement. For me at that time, it was to to bring my little brick on the way uh, leading to the exploration of Mars. Today, our purpose to be confined is to protect our family or friends. I really hate that we can't properly go outside, but maybe it does help when I remind myself more often why we're actually doing this. Das müssen wir wirklich alle begreifen. Im Moment ist nur Abstand Ausdruck von Fürsorge. have things to do, even watching a movie, uh, reading a book, but plan things during the whole day so that at the end of the day, you say, okay, I did all that and uh, oh no, I still have that to do. So tomorrow I will do it. This way you live in the present. You don't look at the big picture. And being busy, you don't, um, you don't sit down and start to have dark thoughts. Cabin fever isn't a psychological disorder. To be honest, I didn't take it that seriously but it turns out that its effects can have grave psychological consequences. Rima Styra researched the effects of isolation on patients who are quarantined during the SARS epidemic. And what we found was that there was a high percentage of people who had both PTSD and depression from having been in quarantine during the SARS episode. They feel there's a lack of control. They often have difficulty sleeping. So you have to keep yourself busy. It's a great time to learn new skills, start new hobbies, take a course, start an initiative that you've always wanted to do that you didn't have time to do. Keep in touch with your close ones. That's really important. Keep in touch with family and friends by using technology. They will provide you a tremendous amount of support. Now there's more of a sense of community. There's so many people in isolation that people don't feel they're the only ones. Even if you're alone in it, you're not really because there's so many other people also alone. That's right. We had eight hours of work, eight hours of uh, free time and eight hours of sleep. We all um, created our own little routines that, that were working. I think it was important to have those routines to, to structure each day. So you have something that you know you're going to do every single day. And routine helps in calming one's fears and anxieties. I get up every morning at the same time. I put on my makeup, although no one will see me, and make myself the same breakfast every day. You know, I do all of this just to pretend that everything is normal. Ah! Those routines, after some time, would become monotonous. So we, we had to kind of break this monotony from time to time by, by making a day different from others. For example, I remember that for Halloween, we decided to dress up and do the whole day dressed up. And uh, in the evening, we would watch some horror movies together just because it was Halloween and to make it different. Breaking this monotony gives some energy to continue on 
uh, for the mission, but for the confinement too. Okay, and when entering the modules, I told myself, okay, this is my universe now. Everything I cannot do right now, I will just do it in a year and a half. And that can still be the case today for the people confined. Wait for the, the, uh, the excitement of doing it at that time when it will be possible again. Being confined for such a long period of time, um, there are things that we do not have and we don't really realize that we are missing them or that they are not there. But when you are back to a normal life after and that you see them or get them again, ah, it's so great. A few weeks ago, it was just so normal to go out, hang out with friends whenever I wanted. I just took it for granted like everybody else. I'm sure I'm going to appreciate the small things in life more once we all get out of this madness. Which questions would you like to know about your life in the corona crisis? Please just let us know and leave a comment.